All right, Donna, you ready to do it? Sure am. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I am very excited to have as my guest today, Donna K. Donna, you welcome. You ready to do this? I am ready to do this. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So Donna is a board certified holistic health and nutrition practitioner, the CEO and founder of the ADHD Thrive Institute and the creator of the ADHD Thrive Method for Kids program. As a mother of a child with ADHD, she knows firsthand the struggles that come with parenting a neurodiverse child, but she also knows the freedom that's possible once parents learn to reduce ADHD symptoms. Donna has been featured in Forbes, Authority Magazine, Medium, Influensive, Thrive Global, and various others. She's also been a guest on multiple parenting and ADHD summits and podcasts, and her mission is to help families reduce ADHD symptoms naturally so that children with ADHD can thrive at home, at school, and in life. Donna, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. And I will say, and I will add to that, yeah. I do have a best-selling book as well. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll talk about that and we'll have that linked up. For sure. Um, all right. Before we get going here, share with our listeners where you're from originally and where you are currently. Yeah. Well, I am Australian. I know uh, um, you're probably shocked when you first hear my voice, uh, but I do live in Seattle, Washington in the US. We've been oh, here nice. for over eight years. We're not going anywhere. I uh, don't think I'll ever lose my accent. <laughs> I think it will be with me for life. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's, let's start. Um, how did all this start? Yeah, look, I, it's, you know, it's very close to my heart and, you know, believe it or not, I, I was actually completely removed from the health and wellness space and I was in the field of accounting and I had actually planned to continue in that field and really might have done so if my concerns over my son's health hadn't grown as much as they did. And, you know, when I grew up, when, you know, when I was a child, all I wanted to be when I grew up was a businesswoman in an office. Uh, and that's what I got. And I was, you know, really, really happy. But when my son was about four, uh, you know, his, uh, concerns over his health uh, really started to grow and he would have so much energy, literally bouncing off the walls, like super hyperactive. He'd have these mammoth meltdowns that would literally stop our family. And it was just so much stronger than any other child his age. And, mm -hmm. you know, my gut really told me that there was something missing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the teachers said, no, he's just a boy. This is the way mm -hmm. it is. Uh, but eventually his tantrums became even more severe. Well, give us an indication of that. If I, Pardon me for interrupting, but yeah. bring us crazy. What, what What's a crazy tantrum? Yeah, in your well, world? So so, you know, even I just asked the most basic thing, can you, we're going to the park, can you go put your shoes on? And he would literally just melt down for the next hour, screaming, kicking, hitting, um, crying, and anything that I did just wouldn't soothe him. Mm -hmm. And we just couldn't go out. We couldn't, you know, we, I was uh, worried about the fear of what would happen if we, we went out to the park and he'd have a meltdown or he'd kick another child. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would go to bed at night, you know, feeling guilty, uh, uh, like I was a bad parent. And uh, I'd also feel guilty for not giving my other son the attention that he needed. Mm -hmm. And then I'd wake up every morning dreading the day mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, this is not what I dreamt to uh, uh, that it was like to have a child. Uh, and if I had known that that was what it was going to be like, I probably would have decided not to have a child. But you know, what I then went on to learn was it wasn't normal, you know, mm -hmm. and there are things that can reduce that. And so, you know, we, we went to the pediatrician, we went to a specialist, we did neuropsych testing, and he was eventually diagnosed with ADHD and we were immediately handed a prescription medication. Wow. Yep. And he was, uh, he was four at the time. So okay. let me, uh, let me, if I may, because this is really, really good info. So at four years old, he was diagnosed by ADHD by whom? A neuropsych um, a specialist. So a psychologist. Yeah. Specialized. Yeah. Okay. And so did you see this behavior just everywhere? 
every in different yeah. contexts. Yeah, situations. look, it was more it was more uh, strong at home. It was more strong in social environments. It was less at school, uh, okay. but the teachers were starting to no- notice that at school as well. Okay, okay, and just for uh, context here, healthy otherwise. Yeah, super okay. healthy. Okay. Uh, no other issues um, that we were aware of at the sure, time. Sure, sure. Okay. Proceed, please. Yeah. So, look, I mean, when we were diagnosed, I was actually, I remember feeling re- re- relieved uh, mm. with the diagnosis and the medication. You know, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, I'm not a bad parent. <laughs> right. You know, it, this is not me, um, you know, and we were going to finally get the help that we needed. There was a pill that was going to solve our family <laughs> issues. Uh, and so I like, you know, I, I skipped and hopped into that, into that drugstore to fill that prescription <laughs> medication. And I was like, I, I, it was in the middle of the day and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to wait till tomorrow to give it to him. Right. And so, uh, you know, I gave it to him and at first things were really good. Uh, you know, he'd calm down. He, uh, started playing nicely with his brother. Um, and they were great until they weren't. And, you know, then he started to have really bad come down effects in the afternoon when the medication started to wear off. Mm -hmm. And so the dosage increased and Mm. then side effects became worse and worse. How long ago was this, Donna? This was, um, he was four and five. So how long ago? Um, Probably uh, he's 13. So yeah. So he's, he's a long time ago now, like eight years or so um, or more. Uh, And, you know, the and so the doctor actually prescribed another prescription to counteract the side effects of the first one and this continued until uh he was five at the time he was on three very strong medications and when the doctor suggested the fourth medication to counteract some new side effects that popped up they wanted to put him on an ssri because of anxiety um i just couldn't do it anymore wow And that's when my career path completely changed. And, you know, I went back to school. I did my holistic health degree. I did multiple specific certifications in this particular area. So wait a minute. So So you said to yourself, okay, this is nuts. Boom. I got to deal with this. I got to find Talk to us about that process. Yeah. So look, I just really started diving into the research at first and tried to work out what we could do that didn't involve all of these meds. And I jumped on all the forums. I dived into the research. You know, I dived into all the published studies and really just tried to find information and information and information. And, you know, I remember like one night, it was like 1 a.m. and I was like, doing something, you know, researching. And I looked at the clock and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to go to sleep. It's 1am. Mm-hmm. And I jumped into bed and I was like, couldn't sleep. Of course, mm-hmm. that's the way it is. And I'm like, why does this have to be so hard? Mm-hmm. Why isn't there someone out there that can, you know, just give me that plan, mm-hmm. lay it all out there for me and, you know, not be reliant on four medications for my s- small child. And that's where, you know, I really just put my head down and my bum up and just went for it. I really learned how uh, food can affect so many aspects of our lives. Uh, I began to learn that ADHD symptoms can be reduced naturally and that it was, you know, really the body was in a state of inflammation and we Mm. needed to reduce that inflammation so he could thrive. Uh, I also learned about the gut-brain connection, um, which, you know, I can go into a little bit of detail if you want to, but all of these little pieces of the puzzle started to come together and, you know, as I made these small, slow changes, things started to shift for him. And, you know, we took out some of the most inflammatory foods out of his diet. Such as? Gluten, dairy, soy. Uh, You know, it does go a little bit deeper than that with like artificial flavors and artificial colors. But literally within two weeks of taking out gluten and dairy and some of these other things, he was a different kid. Like, my God. It was bizarre. It was bizarre. I was like, how is this even possible? Um, The first thing that changed for him was his meltdowns reduced in frequency. 
in uh, um, length of time that they went on for, um, of the level of reactivity, and then they just started becoming few and far between, okay? Okay, Uh, this is uh, awesome stuff. So he had been um, on a quote-unquote like normal diet. He was having yeah. have some bread and some pancakes yeah. and da, 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 da. but yeah. how was that? So that was contributing to inflammation. Yes. Inflammation in his body. And um, so, uh, you know, it really, I could go really deep on this well, I, one. I'm but... curious about how that translates. Mm. Can you give us some science, some basic understanding? Yeah, of sure. Yeah. Look, I mean, mm. I have run into many non-believers in my time and, you know, I'll tell you that my husband used to be one of them. Um, he's sitting upstairs right now. I always throw him under the bus. But it was the science that first made me rethink the direction that we're travelling with him. And there are so many studies out there that actually support it. Um, there was a study done in 2015 that concluded that 64% of children diagnosed with ADHD were actually experiencing a hypersensitivity to food. Mm. 64% of that study. You know, I wonder what might happen if these children change their diet, mm-hmm. remove the foods that they were sensitive to. Is it possible that the ADHD symptoms would reduce uh, or sometimes even disappear? I believe it is. Um, there are other studies showing uh, there was one, 56% of ADHD kids tested positive for food allergies compared to less than 8% of kids in the general population. And that tells me there is a clear correlation between ADHD and food allergies. Mm-hmm. There was another study, um, and this is a, this is one that, you know, it's more about what we put in rather than what we take out. In, in 2017, there was a study concluded that the addition of micronutrients in the diet improved overall function, reduced impairment, improved attention, emotional regulation, and aggression. Clearly, medication is not the only way to help children with ADHD. And I could keep going on and on, but. So, well, I want to, my question is, so when we say inflammation, what do we mean? Yeah. So look, um, inflammation, I like to look of it. I like to look um, at it in a couple of different ways. So uh, we are all built, we are all born with a bucket. Okay, a metaphorical bucket. And the goal in our life, in our bodies, is to keep the load on that bucket low. So we want to keep the toxic load in our bucket low. But what happens is that some of our kids are born with their bucket with already stuff in it. So for the Mm -hmm. sake of my son, he was born, um, uh, I was induced early. He was given medication as soon as he was born. He had premature lung disease. He was in the NICU. He was on medication and he was on a CPAP machine. So his bucket already had some stuff in it, okay? Now, uh, uh, some of us can empty our bucket out really easily as we go through life, meaning that we've got optimized detoxification pathways. And so our body or all of us are born with our genetics. Um, Some of us have genes that will give us optimized detoxification pathways. Others have gene mutations in those particular areas that will compromise our detoxification pathways allowing us not to empty out our bucket. Okay. Mm -hmm. So over the years, we, all this load comes on our bucket. It might be from medication. It might be from toxic exposure. It might be from heavy metals. It might be from bad diet uh, and so forth and so forth. And then that load on the bucket increases and increases and increases until it tips over and all of that stuff goes out into our body. And then that's how Mm -hmm. symptoms come out. But, you know, you may eat gluten. I may not because the load that the gluten load that it puts on my on my bucket is too much for my body to handle. So mm-hmm. I know that to keep my bucket low, that I need to not eat gluten because gluten is so highly inflammatory mm-hmm. to uh, everyone. Uh, I would say that's probably one of the first things. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, everyone should probably not be eating. The way that we process wheat and gluten in the world today is nothing like what it used to be. Mm-hmm. It's highly sprayed with glyphosate, which is, you know, a pesticide and, you know, organically, you know, GMO modified. There's so many different things that add to that. Now, highly inflammatory substances lead to an immune response. 80% of the body's total immune system is within the gut walls. 
okay, along with billions of nerve cells. And so those inflammatory substances will provide this immune response. And, you know, gluten, I'll go back to it, is one of the things that I will recommend for everyone to remove because it's so highly inflammatory. And gluten triggers something called increased intestinal permeability in everyone. So even those who don't show an allergic reaction to it. And intestinal permeability refers to the breakdown of the intestinal walls. And when functioning properly, the walls of the intestine form a barrier and they allow water and nutrients to pass through uh, into the cells to give us what we need, but blocking other things from entering the bloodstream. So like toxins and things like that. So when a person has increased intestinal permeability, that can lead to leaky gut, which basically means the tight junctions in the gut that are supposed to control what passes through the lining of the intestines aren't doing their job effectively. So they allow those toxins and harmful substances to enter the bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there. So if you just imagine what happens when these toxic substances enter the bloodstream, the body will try to fight them off and tries to get rid of them. Uh, And so when something enters the bloodstream that isn't supposed to be there, it triggers an inflammatory response as the body seeks to rectify the issue. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I'm thinking about my six-year-old girl who is like amazing, but like, you know, not I mean, it's great uh, exhibiting some of those behaviors. Yes. Like, what the heck is going on here? Mm-hmm. Like you say one thing and it's like. Pfft. Yep. And it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. So you articulated that beautifully, by the way. I just Thank want to you. say that. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So you shift your son's diet. Yes. He starts. What, what? So what did you get more specific? What did you stop giving him? What did you start feeding him? Yeah. Yeah. So look, definitely uh, um, I removed out the top inflammatory foods and they are gluten, dairy, and soy. I also took out artificial flavors and artificial colors. Uh, There is a lot of research around artificial colors and how bad they are for uh, kids in, you know, increased hyperactivity and things like that. Interestingly, in Europe, you're actually required to put a warning label on a product, a food product, um, if they've got them, saying that, these co- this causes increased hyperactivity in children. Wow. So we're not required to do that here in the US, uh, but no one sh- no kids should be eating them. Now, uh, it's not just about what to take out. It is really about what to put back into the body. You know, as far as what to, f- you know, feed and what I fed my son, my, my best tip is to anyone, focus on whole, nutritious, fresh fruits, veggies, you know, grass-fed animal proteins such as meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, and plenty of healthy fats like avocado, coconut, and olive oils because they really feed the brain Mm -hmm. and really give the brain what it needs to function well. You also want to be drinking plenty of spring water so you're avoiding harmful chemicals that are in some waters, but also water helps detox the body and remove Mm -hmm. the toxins that are already there. Mm -hmm. And honestly, focusing on whole foods. So what what did you feed him for breakfast? Okay. So for breakfast, we do something like um, uh, overnight oats. And overnight oats is uh, so simple. It literally takes five minutes. You actually put oats, normal gluten-free. You need to make sure they're certified gluten-free because oats, there's a lot of cross-contamination. And, you know, we will put in a non-dairy milk. I'll put in some applesauce. I may put in a tiny bit of maple syrup sometimes, cinnamon. And I actually put it in those ball glasses, you know, those little ball glasses. I pop them in the fridge and I've got them for the whole week. It's taken me five minutes. They grab a ball glass in the morning and they eat that for breakfast. There are other things. You you can do scrambled eggs. You can do, uh, you know, uh, bacon. You need to make sure that it has no nitrites, no nitrates or nitrates nitrites in it Mm because that's a chemical that can cause issues in the body as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So plenty of things, not just your typical cereal. Cereal is terrible. There is no nutrition in it whatsoever. The other thing we love is smoothies. You know, we do, I make smoothie bags on a Sunday, pop them in the freezer. They grab a smoothie bag, they pop it into the blender and they pour in the liquid and then it's done. Huh? Boy, I, 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 I'm, thinking that we have to seriously 
shift our our daughter's diet. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let me just remind everyone that I'm speaking with Donna K. Uh, Donna, your website is what? ADHDthriveinstitute.com. Okay. ADHDthriveinstitute.com. We'll have that linked up at the show notes page at the trauma therapist right. podcast.com. So, okay. So carry on. So you started this shift in his diet. He started yep. to get better. He, you know, within two weeks, he was a different child. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Like, and, and for me, I think that the, the tantrums and the meltdowns are the worst. Yeah. Uh, they're the hardest for a family to handle. You know, there's no peace. There's no calm. There's everyone's in that heightened fight or flight mode. And that's yeah. what we were like, that this is what the house was like, that current fight or flight. And that's not good for anyone's nervous system. And that's <laughs> going to cause issues in its own, in its own right. And so, yeah. you know, it's really important just to calm the house down. And the way to do that is to calm the body down. And so we saw huge changes there. I knew that there was probably something deeper going on. And so then we moved into functional lab testing and functional lab testing. The role of that is really like, I like, I kind of like to think of it as a microscope looking deep into the body. You know, we use those functional lab testing to identify those hidden stresses, mm -hmm. um, you know, something going on in the gut, something going on in, you know, the neurotransmitters, which are our hormones um, that, you know, regulate our mood and our emotion. And so I really wanted to sort of dive deep into going, what else is going on in my son? And so, uh, you know, I meant I briefly touched on uh, the the gut brain connection, uh, but I just want to go a little bit uh, deeper on that because it really comes back into doing the lab testing. So, what um, uh, you know, I want to tie gut health to brain health. What what the gut brain connection means is, in essence, our brains are deeply connected to our guts, and if our guts aren't functioning well our brains won't be able to function well either. Mm -hmm. And 95% of the body's serotonin and 50% of the body's dopamine is produced in the gut. And these are the hormones or neurotransmitters that help us manage our emotions and balance mm -hmm. our mood and help our cognitive function. And, you know, emotional dysregulation is a common symptom of ADHD as it was with my son that many parents don't realize that this emotional dysregulation actually starts in the gut where the serotonin and the dopamine are made. So the problem then is not the emotions themselves, but the fact that the correct amounts of these vital neurotransmitters are not being made in the first place. So by working to improve gut health, many parents of children with ADHD find that the emotional dysregulation problems solve themselves. And so mm. for my son, we took out gluten, dairy, and soy, and that actually allowed his gut to start healing on its own. That's why those tantrums and meltdowns actually started to level out. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest thing, especially when it comes to ADHD, is the brain has many areas involved in gut function, but the main area is the frontal lobe, which is, you know, when you're pointing, I don't know if you're doing video or, or just audio, but if you can't see me, I'm pointing to the middle of my forehead. And that's the area of the brain that talks to the gut via two-way chemical messengers and nerve branches. And the frontal lobe is involved in things like attention and focus and executive function and planning and organizing and problem solving, all of which are areas that are affected by ADHD. A lot of children, a lot of adults often struggle with those tasks. Uh, and But because the frontal lobe is in the brain, many people are under the impression it's the brain that what needs care, when mm -hmm. reality, it's also the gut that's causing the problem. And I think I just like to use this analogy because it, you know, may seem a little bit complicated, but have you ever sort of felt butterflies in your stomach because you were nervous about something? Sure. Yes, definitely. I know I have uh, many times. And that's a perfect example of the gut-brain connection. Our bodies perceive whatever we're nervous about mm -hmm. as a stressful situation and then triggers our, you know, our brains trigger that raw emotion in our gut resulting in those butterflies or resulting in nausea. Um, and so that's the brain talking to the gut, but the reverse is also true. Our guts talk to our brains as well. And when the digestive system uh, is specifically the intestinal tract has has stuff going on with it, you know, it might be that leaky gut that I mentioned, it might be, you know, an overgrowth of bad bacteria that uh, creates inflammation, 
that inflammation travels through the vagus nerve to the brain. And once it reaches the brain, it creates all of those symptoms like brain fog, inability to focus, Mm -hmm. poor memory, and a whole host of those issues. You know, it's kind of like this highway. The gut and brain are constantly sending messages back and forth. And and when medication is prescribed for ADHD, it's often to treat the symptoms in the brain alone. And Mm -hmm. that medication does absolutely nothing about whatever might be going on in the gut. So when you... um... When, he, when your son was initially diagnosed, was there any mention of diet? Not a single you thing. Know, and interestingly, surprising. yeah, when I actually mm. started learning all about this, I went to my pediatrician and said, look, I've just started learning a lot about the gut-brain connection, um, how food can impact so much. You know, can we do a can we do a stool test? Can we do vitamin and mineral deficiency tests? Can we do um, food sensitivity testing? And he looked me in the eyes. He said, don't bother. None of that works. But here's another prescription medication. We don't have the same pediatrician anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what, at what point did you say to yourself, Donna, okay, I, uh, I'm going to help other people with this? Uh, look, you know, when I, uh, when I started to see the changes in my own son, you know, when I started to, uh, you know, when I started to learn these things and see how my son started to thrive, how we were able to actually titrate off all of his medication. And as I said, he's 13, he's in middle school, he's thriving. He hasn't been on meds for years. Mm. You know, once I saw that, that, you know, the most important thing for me is he's happy. uh, And our family has that peace and that calm in our house. And, you know, Mm -hmm. once I learned all of this and the importance of food on behavior, once I saw all of these strategies work in my own family, I just couldn't keep this information to myself. I, I didn't want anyone to have to go through all of the struggles my family went through. Honestly, it was so hard. And when I think back to it and I think back it makes me emotional because why did it have to be so hard for me? But at the same time, I wouldn't be where I am today. I've been able to help over a thousand families get to the same place as me so much quicker. Um, and, you know, I just, uh, this should be mainstream. This should be the first port of call when a child is diagnosed with ADHD, food first, right. not stimulant medication first. Let's try food and see if that works. Because I can tell you that the changes, the testimonials, the you can read the stories of all the families that I've worked with. They are amazing. They're mm. heart wrenching. Mm. And people have just stepped off that roller coaster. They've stepped out of that tornado. Mm. Uh, and it is it is very, very amazing to watch. When someone's diagnosed with a well, ADHD. And you you made the change for the diet and it's, you saw a lot of improvements is, does that stick in a sense? Does, did your son get to a point where, you know, well, I can have some pizza or I can have some gluten and I'm not going to be as affected or impacted. Very, very, very good question. And so uh, with him, you know, I removed out gluten, dairy, and soy. Uh, We also did a food sensitivity panel to see if his body was creating inflammation from any other foods. And so we took those foods out as well while we healed the gut. All of those foods we were able to add back in after three to six months once we healed the gut. However, gluten... Gluten, um, I will never tell anyone to add back in. We actually have done our genetics and we've seen that with our genetics, we're more predisposed to have um, non-celiac gluten sensitivity uh, and um, lactose intolerance. And so we will never add that back in. I would, no one should be eating gluten. Like seriously, the way it's processed, they say no one, even if you don't have an issue with it. So I will Mm. never suggest to any family to add that back in. You can do gluten-free pizza uh, Mm -hmm. if you really want to. Um, And so with dairy, some kids, we can slowly test it back in and, you know, uh, it can be done not straight away, but, you know, 12, 18 months down the path. Um, soy is another kettle of fish. Um, soy mimics estrogen production uh, and uh, 95% of soy is genetically modified in uh, the US. And so 
if you're going to test it back in later, I would always say test back in non-GMO organic soy um, and really keep it to a minimum because of the estrogen side of things. And so, uh, you know, a bit of like uh, organic edamame beans, you know, once a month is okay, but really, really try to keep it low. So how do you, who do you work with? I work with families that have kids uh, between the ages of four and 18 and uh, who have kids that have ADHD. And it's simple as that. I don't, you know, I'm very focused on ADHD. Uh, I don't try to be uh, it to everybody. Um, You know, there are so many there are so many people out there. Look, honestly, with ADHD comes other things as well. So, you know, I help kids that have anxiety. I help kids that have autism because, you know, there's always those comorbidities that happen. But really kids aged between the age of four and and 18, uh, the younger that you can do it, the more, um, the more success you'll most likely have. Okay. Um, and your book? Yes. What's the title of your book? It is called, and I'm just looking for it to see if I have a copy. It is behind me, Thriving with ADHD, um, a guide to naturally reducing ADHD symptoms in your child. Okay. And that can be purchased. Found on Amazon. Okay. Awesome. Um, And your podcast is called? The Soaring Child. And we interview experts uh, uh, on, you know, The Soaring Child. Every child with ADHD can soar naturally and so that's really the focus of the podcast it's amazing we've we've had some great interviews um i also like to sometimes interview i interviewed a a great guy who uh grew up with adhd and is extremely successful and so i had him on the podcast as well uh so yeah it's it's great awesome we'll have uh each of those linked up at the show notes page at the trauma therapist podcast.com donna awesome man uh love to have you back you are love to be uh, back. so passionate and it's it's just so inspiring to hear your journey as well as your son's journey. So thank you so much for, for joining me welcome. today. All right, we'll be in touch. 